So, you've just got your first ever hobby grade RC car and you are absolutely loving it. You've been running it every day, sometimes twice, and you've definitely got some driving skills happening. But you start to feel something growling and growing deep within your belly, that constant hunger for power. And today we're going to show you how to feed that beast and make your RC car faster. Almost any RC car can be made to go faster, but today we'll be using this brushed HSP Viper. The Viper is part of a group of cars we refer to collectively as the HSP two-wheel drive cars. We've covered why we like them so much in other videos, links in description. But basically, these are around $200 and come with remote, battery, charger, and a brush motor and electronic speed control. Now, this is kinda old school tech, but it is very easy to use. It's fast enough to be fun, but not too fast for new or inexperienced drivers. But that's not you anymore. You've got to know your car, and now you want to unleash its full potential. But first, let's get a benchmark top speed on this guy. Out of the box, the HSB Viper did 36 kilometers an hour. Not bad, but we have the need for speed. So, how are we gonna make it faster? First, let's see what we're working with here. If you wanna check what type of motor your car has before doing anything, an easy way to tell is to look at the number of motor wires you have. Brush motors have two wires. Brushless have three wires. This Viper has a brush motor and a six cell nickel metal hydride battery. So, what are we going to replace it with to get more fast? Well, we could get a couple of kilometers an hour by playing around with the battery voltage, either LiPo power or a seven cell nickel metal battery. This would certainly wake the car up a bit in terms of acceleration, but with that stock brush motor and ESC, it won't really change our top speed and will shorten the lifespan of the motor. We could also go a couple of k's faster by changing the gearing. A bigger pinion or smaller spur will give us slightly more top speed at the expense of acceleration. The car will go faster, but it's not actually any more powerful, so it'll take longer to get to top speed. Dull. We want a reliable, immediate, and massive power increase to fuel our hunger for speed. So in today's build, we'll be upgrading to a LiPo battery and a new motor and ESC. I'm talking brushless. In this case, we're installing a Hobbywing Max 10 60 amp 4000 kV brushless combo. There are more expensive and more budget friendly combos out there, but Hobbywing is renowned for their performance and quality. Plus, we've always had good experiences with Hobbywing electronics. Now, I can remember oh too well the first time I tried to find a suitable brushless combo. I remember thinking, what do all these numbers and specs mean? And are they even important? So I thought I'd try to help out by running through these common specs to help you select the right combo for your particular RC car. 3652SL. Written here, this is the motor can dimensions. This means the motor is 36 millimeters in diameter and 52 millimeters long, 3652. The SL stands for sensorless. 4000 kV. KV is the constant velocity of a motor, not to be confused with kilovolt, that's, that's not a thing. This value is the number of revolutions per minute, or RPM, that a motor turns when one volt is applied with no load attached to the motor. So a 4000 kV motor with one volt input, 4000 RPM, and 8000 RPM with a two volt input, and so on. The higher the KV rating, the faster the motor. 5000 is faster than 4000 kV. However, lower KV motors have a higher torque output. 4000 has more torque than the same size 5000 kV motor. Go too high on this value and the motor won't have the torque to move the car unless it has very, very slow gearing, which kind of defeats our entire purpose here. When selecting a motor, keep in mind the size and weight of your vehicle. Also, if it is two wheel drive or four wheel drive is an important factor as it takes more torque to power four wheels. If you're struggling to work out what size or KV motor to get for your RC car, check to see if the manufacturer has the same model in a brushless already, as you can use the motor they install as a baseline. For example, the Viper we're upgrading today also comes in a brushless version called the Viper BL. This truck has a 3652SL 3300KV motor and a 60 amp ESC. So this tells me that the Hobbywing combo we're installing will be a bit faster, but have a bit less torque. 
It's also worth mentioning that not all motor shafts are the same. There are two common sizes, 3.17mm which is an eighth of an inch and 5mm. Check which one you need before selecting a combo as you need to make sure your pinion gear will fit onto your new motor. Now onto the ESC. How many amps your ESC needs to be can vary quite a bit, but more is nearly always better. The amp rating, in this case 60, generally represents the sustained current the ESC can handle. Faster motors draw more power, especially at initial launch acceleration, so this 60 amp ESC with a burst current of 360 amps will do nicely. Getting a combo is great as the motor is generally already matched to the ESC. This combo is going to be significantly more powerful than the original brushed gear, so your nickel metal battery might struggle to give you decent run times, and it'll likely get really hot. What do all these things on the battery mean? Well quickly, the MAH is the battery's capacity. Think of it as litres of fuel in the tank. Larger the capacity, longer the runtime. Voltage is how much power and top speed. Too much voltage and you'll let the magic smoke out of your electronics. And I still haven't worked out quite how to put the smoke back in. The C rating is more complex, but aids in throttle response. This rating determines how much current can be drawn from the battery continuously without it sustaining damage. You can think of it like a fuel pump and how much it can supply your engine. Higher the C rating, the more fuel it can supply to your thirsty motor. So go as high as budget allows for this one. It's worth mentioning that if you get a LiPo battery with a too low C rating for your setup, you can damage both your battery and the ESC. We're going to be dropping in this NXE 5000 milliamp to S 45C LiPo battery to maximize power and run times, so make sure your chosen ESC's low voltage protection is switched on. LVC protects your LiPos from damage caused by running a LiPo battery flat, so check your instructions and make sure the LVC is definitely switched on. If, like us, you're stepping up to LiPo power as well, make sure you only ever use a LiPo compatible charger for your new power source. You cannot use a NIM charger for LiPos and trying to do so can be very dangerous. For more in-depth explanations of these components, check out our Hobby Electronics Explained video, link in the description. So with that nerd stuff out of the way, let's go fast. Here's what you'll need. Your selected brushless motor and ESC a suitable LiPo battery and charger, tools to remove your motor and pinion gear, in our case a 1.5mm and 2.5mm hex driver, microfiber cloth and methylated spirits to clean the surfaces before sticking the new ESC down, some zip ties to tidy up our wiring. Now converting a brush motor and ESC to brushless on a rear motor two wheel drive chassis like this is super easy, barely an inconvenience. Firstly, take a photo of how everything was connected. You may need to reference something when you go installing all this new stuff. Now you can unplug everything. The ESC from the receiver, it's in channel 2, and the motor from the ESC. You now should be able to remove the ESC from the car. This one is just held down with double sided tape. Now it's time to swap the motor. On the Viper, it's just a case of removing the gear cover, two screws, and unbolting the motor two screws. You may have to take off the pinion gear to get the motor off the mount, but that's okay. We need to transplant it onto the new brushless motor anyway. If your car has fixed gear mesh, go ahead and bolt the new motor in. If not, and your motor is mounted on an adjustable motor plate, you will need to check your mesh as you tighten down the motor screws. Check the pinion gear's alignment with the spur too, and adjust if necessary. Setting the gear mesh right is an important step to ensure you don't strip your gears. If you need more help, see our video on setting your gear mesh, link in the description. After you've replaced the gear cover, you can now attach your new ESC, usually with double sided tape, to wherever fits best on the chassis. Be sure to clean both surfaces thoroughly to make sure the ESC and chassis adhere properly to one another. You don't want dust, dirt and debris when applying the double sided tape. Plug in your motor wires. You'll notice that there are three, normally labelled A, B, C, if they are labelled. Plug the ESC into the receiver. It goes into channel 2, usually with the wires going left to right, signal, positive, negative. Your receiver should have little symbols telling you what way around to plug it in. But if it doesn't, you can consult that photo that you definitely remember to take earlier. Double check all your connections, settings and screws. Now we need to calibrate the ESC and transmitter. This will set the full throttle, neutral, brake and reverse positions to your specific transmitter. Also, make sure your throttle trim is at neutral before starting the calibration process. 
Read your ESC manual for instructions. We've done a video on how to calibrate ESC endpoints as well. Check the link in the description. Give the car a gentle test drive just to make sure all is well. You may have to flip the channel 2 reverse switch on your radio if the car doesn't move forward or goes backwards when you pull the trigger. If it's faster in reverse than forwards, switch any two of the motor wires around and try again. In some cases, you may have to both swap two wires and reverse the channel switch. One last thing to check before our first run. If your radio has a built-in failsafe, ensure that it's set to the correct throttle position. Failing to do so can result in a runaway. So, put your car up on a box or something to get the wheels off the ground. Otherwise, your runaway test may become runaway for real. Usually, the remote should be the first thing turned on, then the car. When turning off, it switch the car off first, then the remote. But, we're testing the failsafe here by simulating signal loss. We do this by turning off the remote before turning the car off. Our how to set a failsafe video link is in the description as well. Now it's time to see just how much faster your pride and joy is now. Let's go find out! we got 63 kilometers an hour that's sick there you go massive massive gains and yeah likely more breakages and worn out parts but totally worth it it just gives us an excuse to tinker with it for even more speed so that's it how to make your RC car faster properly faster thanks for watching if you liked this video please like this video and if you want to subscribe, you can do that as well. See you all next time. Bye.